Welcome back to ASVAB Roadmap. We're going to start off with number properties. Certain number properties follow rules that will never vary. Often, you can use these rules as an effective way to help you solve problems on the ASVAB. There are only a few things to remember about positive and negative numbers. Adding a negative number is the same as subtracting a positive number with the same absolute value. As you can see below, 6 plus negative 4 is equal to 6 minus 4, which equals 2. Also, 4 plus negative 6 is equal to 4 minus 6, which equals negative 2. For problems like these, it may be helpful to use a number line to help visualize. Here is positive 6 and negative 4. By adding 6 to negative 4, you can see the box slide all the way to number 2. Same thing here with 4 plus negative 6. Subtract 6 numbers from 4 and you get negative 2. Subtracting a negative number is the same thing as adding a positive number. 6 minus negative 4 is the same thing as 6 plus 4, which equals 10. Watch here. Just add 4 numbers to 6 and you get positive 10. Multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers is the same as all other multiplication and division, with one catch. You need to figure out whether the solution is positive or negative. To do this, count the number of negative numbers. If you had an odd number of negatives, the answer will be negative. If you started out with an even number of negative numbers, the answer will be positive. Take for example, negative 6 times negative 4, which equals 24. There are two negatives which makes this a positive product. Another example, negative one times negative six times negative four, which equals negative 24. There are three negatives, which makes this a negative product. For another, negative 24 divided by six equals negative four. There's one negative, making this a negative quotient. Negative 24 divided by negative four equals six. So here we have two negatives, which equals a positive quotient. The rules for working with integers are very brief. An integer is a whole number, a number that is not a fraction. If you add, subtract, or multiply two integers, the result will always be an integer. However, if you divide two integers, the result may or may not be an integer. You may have a fraction. Working with odd and even numbers can be described with a few rules as well. When you add or subtract two odd numbers or two even numbers, the result will always be an even number. For example, 6 plus 4 equals 10. That's an even plus an even, which equals an even. 7 minus 3 equals 4. Odd, odd equals even. When you add or subtract an even with an odd, the result will be odd. 2 plus 7 equals 9. That's an even and an odd, which equals odd. 5 minus 4 equals 1. That's an odd and an even, which equals odd. When multiplying two numbers, the rule for determining whether the result is even or odd is that any integer times an even integer will result in an even number. The only way the product of two integers will be an odd number is if you multiply two odd numbers. For example, 6 times 4 equals 24. That's even times even, which equals even. 3 times 4 equals 12. That's odd, even, which equals even. 3 times 5 equals 15. That's an odd number times an odd number, which equals an odd number. There are no rules predicting whether the outcome of division will be even or odd, because division does not always result in an integer. Sometimes dividing produces a fraction, and fractions are neither odd nor even. Alright guys, that's all for number properties. Hopefully these are some good tips for you. It would be a great idea to find equations online to practice along with these videos. In the next video, we're going to expand more on absolute value. I'll see you guys there.